Okay, so this week we've got a movie opening up that I have been really anticipating for quite some time. It's Pixar's new movie, Up. That's I've uh, been seeing previews for it for quite some time now, and it looks like a really good movie. But I was had a little trouble thinking about what to do for a tutorial based on this movie this week. Because I, you know, looked at the logo and the type treatment, you know, it was very, very simple and very basic. And, you know, they're, you know, short of, you know, wanting to illustrate one of the characters from the movie, which would have been a very long tutorial, I thought it would be kind of cool to do something in the spirit of the movie and create a balloon. You know, the movie's kind of, it's about a guy who, you know, attaches thousands of these balloons to his house and just kind of floats away. So... I thought it'd be kind of cool to go ahead and illustrate a balloon from scratch, and it's gonna we're gonna do it in a way that's making to make it look very realistic, and that's simply by adding something like a reflective um, image to it, so it looks a little bit more realistic. But what I want to do first is, like in the movie, I want to have it against a blue sky. So on this background layer, we're gonna go in here into our swatches panel, and just select this uh, light blue color here, and if you just hover over it, it's called pure cyan blue. I'm just going to press Option Delete, and it's going to go and fill that color into my background layer. Let's go ahead and create a new blank layer above that one, and we're going to use that same blue color, but we're going to use the gradient tool this time, and again, using the foreground, the transparent, which is the second icon right here, I'm going to go in here and draw a gradient from the bottom. I'm just going to hold down my Shift key and just drag from the bottom to eh, roughly three quarters of the way up the image. Now, we obviously don't see any change here because it is the exact same color blue. We're going to change that by simply changing the blend mode from normal to screen. So it gives me a nice fade from light blue to a darker blue. Well, let's go ahead and merge those together so we get a nice, uh, so we can keep our layer count down. We don't need that uh, that many layers for that part of it. Well, let's go ahead and create some clouds. I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer above that one. And we're going to jump in here, grab my rectangular marquee tool. I'm just going to draw a narrow selection right in the middle of my document. Now, I need to set my uh, colors here to their default, black and white, so I'm simply going to press the D key, and we're going to go into the filter menu and go down here to Render and choose Clouds. So it gives me a nice clouds fill there. Let's go ahead and deselect. I'm going to press Command and Control T to start the free transform, and we're going to just scale this out. You can even go beyond the edges of the document, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and press Enter. Then going to blend this with that blue background by simply changing its blend mode from normal to screen. And we get some clouds going on back there. Now, it's, get, it's kind of getting a little too much coverage on here. So this being a black and white layer, notice we're only seeing the lighter area just because it's in screen mode. But we can also use levels to, ver to change how this, these clouds are distributed in the image. So I'm going to bring up my levels. Let's go under Image Adjustments, Levels. And I'm just going to increase the darks uh, in this. I'm just going to take this shadow slider and just push it in. And notice what it's doing. It's spreading those clouds out a little bit more. We, so you don't have to get such a harsh edge. You can use the middle slider here just to give it a little bit less of a harsh edge on those clouds there. So it's got very, very subtle clouds just by doing that. So I'll click OK. If you see that you've got the clouds looking the way you want, but you want to intensify them just a little bit more, just simply press Command-J and duplicate that layer. Notice the difference. You're getting that same distribution of clouds, but they're just a little bit brighter. So that looks good. I think I'm going to go ahead and merge those two layers down. I'm just going to press Command E. So now we've got a nice clouds layer happening there. Well, let's go ahead and create another blank layer. And now let's create the balloon. We're going to go into the toolbar, and we're going to go down here and grab the Ellipse Shape Tool right here. And we want to make sure up here in the... Um, options bar that we are drawing a, just a straight path. We don't want to draw a shape layer or a pixel fill, but just a regular shape layer. So right in here, I'm going to hold down my shift key so I get a perfect circle and just draw out a circle right there in the middle of the document. Grab my path select tool and just kind of position it right here. Now, I'm going to go over here into that path selection tool and we're going to choose the direct selection tool. So I can just select individual points on this path, which a selected point is going to be indicated by being a solid point. Notice if I drag and select this one point, these other points remain hollow. That means they are unselected at the moment. We've only selected this bottom one. We're going to grab that. I'm going to hold down my shift key and just drag down. And you can see it's really starting to take on the shape of a balloon. But I'm going to tweak that a little bit. I'm going to go over here into the pen tool, and we're going to grab this convert point tool. 
I'm just going to click on that bottom point, and it snaps those curves back to their to their origin. But I'm just going to hold my shift key and just drag back out. Now, I haven't released my mouse yet. I just simply click that point, hold the shift key down, and drag out. So we don't want quite... Don't want quite as much a curve as we had on there a moment ago. So we're going to write about there. So that shape is all set. Let's go into our paths panel and let's just go ahead and turn this into a selection. Now we can go ahead and save this path. I'm going to double click on that and just go ahead and tell it to save it. Let's go into the menu here, make selection. And there we've got an active selection based on that path. We're on that new blank layer. So we're going to go ahead and fill this. I'm going to uh, simply press shift delete and we get 50% gray in the use, and there we go. Now we need to add the little knot, the little knot down here that ties off the opening of the balloon. So let's go ahead and grab our lasso tool. I'm just going to draw a very small shape there. And still on that same layer, shift delete, 50% gray, and there we have it. Actually, let's nudge it up a little bit. Grab that move tool. Let's nudge that up. So there we go. Little area that's not fill. All right, so now we've got the balloon, little knot on it, everything looks good. Now, we could go ahead and fill it with a color. I'm not going to do that just yet. What I wanted to go do is go over here, and I've got an image here that I want to use as my reflection. When a balloon is floating in space, you know, anywhere really, it's got a kind of a glossy surface to it. It's reflecting anything that's around it in a way. It's very subtle, but it's there, and that's what makes it more realistic. I don't want this balloon to look cartoony. I want it to actually look as real or as real as it may look in the movie. So with this image here, what I'm going to do is go into the filter menu and we're going to go over here to distort and choose polar coordinates. And we're going to do the rectangular to polar and I click OK and it basically just wraps that around a, a, a circle. So let's take uh, go into our toolbar here and grab the elliptical marquee tool and draw a selection pretty much just over the sky area. This area of the grass and everything like that that got wrapped around, I don't really necessarily need that. I just really want this area inside with the sky and everything. So with that selected, let's move over here. Let's take our move tool, drag and drop that into the working file here. If you hold down your shift key, it will drag and drop that right to the center. Let's go ahead and minimize this. Going to go ahead and put the free, or, uh, invoke the free transform here by pressing command T. And it's going to freely transform this. I'm only holding down my option key, and that will scale it from the center. And I want to get it down to a more of a circle. I'm just going to nudge this up. And just so I can see my placement over the, the actual balloon, I'm just going to go over here and just drop the opacity a little bit. Use my scrubby slider and drop that opacity so I can see the edge of that, the gray balloon there. I'm going to position that here. Now, before I commit the change here, we're still in free transform mode. I'm going to control or right click right on that and get this menu and we're going to choose warp. I'm going to grab this bottom area of this grid and just pull down. Notice it's the reflection is kind of extending beyond the balloon here. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to kind of hang just on the outside area of that because we're going to clip it in once we've got the shape defined here. So we'll just kind of nudge that in place there. And once everything looks good, just simply press enter and let's bring the opacity back up. So it's looking like a reflective surface. Well, let's go ahead and clip that inside the balloon layer by holding down our option key and just clipping in between those layers, or clicking in between those layers, and it will clip that inside there. Now, before we do anything else, let's go ahead and turn the visibility off of that reflection layer for now. Reselect that original layer that contains the balloon shape, and we'll apply an adjustment layer to it. I'm going to go over here and do a hue saturation, and I'm going to click Colorize, and let's go ahead and set the saturation to 60. And you can see because that the original layer is gray, it's going to pick up that hue and give me the purest uh, color for it because that gray is neutral. So I can drag the hue slider and change the color of the balloon. So let's make it, you know, we'll leave it kind of a purplish or pinkish there. So let's reactivate that reflection layer. Now, it is on top. As you can see inside the layers panel here, it is on top of that adjustment layer. But that's fine. What we're going to do is change the blend mode of this from normal to overlay. And you can go around and try different blend modes and see what looks different. Hard light doesn't look bad. Soft lights are a little too subtle. I think I like overlay there, though. So that looks pretty good. 
Well, let's go ahead and create a new layer above that one. I'm going to create a new layer that's not inside the clipping group here. I want to add a reflection, pretty much a hot spot where like the sun would be shining on this thing. So let's grab our brush, the regular brush tool, and get a very soft edge brush, good size soft edge brush, about 100 pixels here. And let's set the, uh, the foreground color to white. I'm just going to click that arrow there. And on that blank layer, let's just click right, right there. Let's do make sure we're in normal blend mode for the tool. And we're going to click right here in the document. So it gives me a little bit of a hot spot there. Next, I've got my Shape Dynamics activated. I don't need that, so I'm going to go ahead and deactivate that. And I'm just going to click once right there in that layer. It gives me a little bit of a hot spot there. Well, now what I want to do is apply some shading to this balloon a little bit. looks good so far, but let's go take it a little bit further. I'm going to load the original shape of this balloon as a selection. I'm going to hold down my Command key and click right on that original layer there, and it loads it as a selection. Go ahead and create a new blank layer, and I think I'm, I'm just going to drag it beneath that highlight, that hot spot layer there. And with that layer active, let's go ahead and press Shift Delete and use 50% gray once more, and it fills it in there. But we're going to change the blend mode of this from normal to hard light. And you'll notice that it disappeared. Basically, it's looking at that gray in this blend mode and rendering it neutral, making it invisible. So we can only see the lighter or darker areas, which we're going to, we're going to paint in using Dodge and Burn. So over here in the toolbar, you click on this tool right here, you've got Dodge and Burn and the Sponge tool. So let's first add some shadows. Let's grab the, uh, the Burn tool. And up here in the Options bar, we're going to set this to Midtones. And we're going to leave that at about 50%. That looks pretty good. And let's increase the brush size. I'm just using my right bracket key here. And make sure we've got all these other features turned off on the brushes that are come on by default. And we go in here, and it's going to paint some shadow area. It's going to drop the exposure down. Let's do it to about 25%. Now we're seeing we've put the hot spot on this side of the balloon. That means there would be a considerable amount of shadow perhaps on the, over here on this side. Maybe a little bit over here. And probably be a little bit darker shadows down here at the bottom. Just painting this in. Very, very subtle. But I think that looks pretty good. Let's go over here into the toolbar and now grab the Dodge tool. And let's just paint around that hot spot just to make this area a little bit brighter, just giving that a little bit more of a highlight there. That looks pretty good. So it's really starting to look like a cool-looking balloon. Now, on that highlight layer that we just created, let's go under the Filter menu, and go to Artistic, and go to Plastic Wrap. This will be kind of a, little, a cool little final touch for this. You can see it's kind of giving me a little plastic look with some highlights there. For the highlight strength, we're going to set it at around 15 and we'll leave the smoothness at 15 and the detail to 1. I'm going to click OK. Now it looks, doesn't look all that great, but immediately after you apply that filter, go under the Edit menu and go to Fade Plastic Wrap. And here we're going to change the blend mode of this filter from Normal to Overlay. And then we're going to drop the opacity down. And we'll do it at about 60. So if I turn that preview on and off, you can see it's made a very subtle change. But it's enhanced that reflection a little bit. You see, it's giving me a little bit of area there. And that looks pretty good. So let's add one last thing. Click and uh, create a new blank layer at the very top here. I'm going to grab my brush tool. We're going to get a very, very small brush. Let's get about a three-pixel brush here. And we're going to add the string to our balloon. Let's go into our brush options, of course, and turn off all the features here. And right here at the very bottom, I'm just going to draw a little bit of a whip, a little bit around there, and just kind of go... Right off screen. We got a little string on there. To make it a little bit more realistic, you can throw a quick layer style on that string. Just double click on that layer. A little quick bevel and emboss. Gives a little bit of shading there, a little bit of dimension. You can increase that depth a little bit. Looks pretty good. Click OK. And there we have it. A very realistic balloon, all right from scratch, right there inside Photoshop. Now, as I mentioned earlier, one cool thing about this is even when you get this all done and everything looks great, you can still go in there and change the color of that balloon. Just simply select that adjustment layer, and over here in the hue, just drag that hue slider and change the color of it. So maybe you want a red balloon, so yellow, green, all different types of options for that balloon. Inspired by the new Pixar movie, Up! now in theaters.